what is up guys, Zen of course, welcome to another MMA Wi-Fi battle with the Troll Wars, the Scarender, and today we're facing, of course, Pat in our last MMA battle and his Noctiles, and I will say this, he's bringing a team I definitely didn't expect to play specifically Wi-Fi battle due to him having me while I was heavily, heavily focusing on actually avoiding that Pokemon off. I did expect Superior um, Electavire, I was gonna say, but... Electric and Nidoking can make it a game and maybe make a pain it, but outside of that, did not see either actually Zangus or Typhlosion making it for this specific battle. So, very, very interesting stuff consider his draft. Having that said, I still have to do my very best to actually avoid enough. So, we have an Asusa lead Garbodor because I really wanted to use my Bar Barbarossa basically for at least once because I haven't used it at all. And uh, yeah, just you know, Asusa lead focus has weakness, armor. So, with, with one physical hit, it's actually able to outspeed anything in this team, which is kind of interesting. Then we have Saps of our Sumeril, uh, mainly for Superior, and Sugarberry, and Sugarberry, what do you call him? Uh, Entei. Uh, nothing really to it, it's basically sad and set with Hidden Power Grass. Oh yeah, he had, of course, uh, Quagsire. That, that is also a Pokemon kind of wanted to see here. Uh, Minagross, offensively built, uh, Mammoth Swine. With Freeze Dry and Stealth Rocks and Scoffed Moxie Heracross for mainly outspeeding his whole team because his team had options to outwaver me. Now, not seeing me well is a good thing, but I'm still gonna lead off with my Garbodor, get the spikes up, and hope I can work something through that. So, with all that said, let's go. So, right from the get go, he is actually gonna start off with Nido King. And yeah, I'm gonna be honest, guys. There were only so many things I could do here. Nido King is just so tough to be dealing with, and I really don't want to take my chances with it. Now, he's going to go for Nerd Power here. Had it been Scarfed, this Nerd Power would not take me down to my Sash. That is life for people. That's a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing is that now I know he's definitely not Scarfed, because, like I said, that I would actually not be pushed down there. But the bad part is now I know his life for, which means that I really can't switch into anything on this. I just have to win the matchup, and the only way I could win the matchup is by bringing in the Alpha Max already and go for an Earthquake. Earthquake is not a one go, and I was really fearing that he will switch in something that of course is floating. And the luck for me, I guess you should say he didn't do that, because he just managed to take his Nidoking Kingdom to the area where Spice will take him out. So uh, yeah, I had no reason switching out there, I just kept on going basically. I was really fearing Superior in any view like that because they could take the Earthquake and he actually loses his Nidoking King very, very early and I didn't really get why he wanted to play that game. Now here comes Superior, as I said here, I built a Sumeril mainly for taking on this guy because outside of that, there is really nothing on my team that takes Leaf Storm well, it's just, it just doesn't do it and usually they have enough hard fires to take on, of course, Metagross, so I didn't want to try to waver myself. So bringing a Sumeril here, which is of course used to pump the apple use in French, haha. <laughs> but yeah, the, all I really can do here is actually scald, knock off, toxic him, or go for encore. But I decided here that go for scald was a safer play. And I actually did think that he would expect me to be sap super for this uh, matchup. Now he didn't do that, and actually told me that I actually forgot completely that Sumer really gets that, and he is um, basically walled by me. The only thing he can do is go for glare. Which is fine, really, and as I will go for a knockoff. Seeing that I get that he is, well, walled in some fashion here, I gotta keep going for knockoff. Predicting that he's probably gonna switch out as he goes to Electros. And I actually realized as Electros comes in that, yeah, I, I don't have anything for this guy now, do I? So, while I can take Electros out, I actually need to free switch against it, and I have really yet to know whether or not it's special or physical as he goes for a knockoff and show me that this guy is definitely physical. But uh, yeah, all I'm really gonna do here is get up Hazard because I was so sure, I should say, that uh, I was <laughs> live for my expert pills for this matchup. And the reason I say that is because I knew Brain Punch would've killed me, but I was thinking that at least I can go for an Ice Shard and basically knock myself out. Uh, I don't have um, Ice Little Crash, I have Freeze Strike in case they had, of course, Quagsire. So, I didn't have Life Orb, as you guys see, I don't knock myself out as Electron's Knockout, of course, Mammoth Wine. Yeah, you don't see that every day now, do you? So, anyway, I can just go to Alpha Max, and Close Combat is well beyond an area of him being killed by, of course, it. And, uh, yet again, I was still fearing, what if, and I say, what if he switched into his Bayonets? 
And uh, yeah, that was my only, only thought process as he is actually gonna switch into his Sangus and I had to calculate whether or not I could die by quick attack and I'm actually able to survive a quick attack due to my build being more defensively so I'm gonna risk staying in of course and just going for another close combat feeling really surprised it brought Sangus as he doesn't go for quick attack and he loses his Sangus and here's where I basically and I guess you'd say this already this is pretty much GG um, he probably felt that after Superior uh, was walled out that he had no option of breaking through anything on my team and he basically decided to give up this game and um, all I can say is you know I understand him I really do I got really fast hazards up very very early and uh, Heracross due to him lacking a Scarper could just break through really really easily the only Pokemon actually being able to deal with um, Heracross is uh, his Mega Bayonet which, which absolutely can't deal with Entei or anything else on my team, so yeah, this is a wrap, and uh, while it is a very, very <laughs> short battle, I did enjoy it, because I was prepping so heavy for this battle, and not seeing the likes of me while and stuff like that, kind of threw me off, I, I, I won't lie about that, I actually was very impressed that he brought something else, and I was feeling going into this game that he could, with the thing he was bringing, he, he could actually try something new against me, I was fearing I was gonna face that, but obviously I, well, didn't. So, as Eldridge, of course, being a very, very nice nickname for a makeup unit, uh, comes in, I'm obviously still locked into close combat, and uh, he basically gave up his mounts as he's not gonna just bring makeup unit and, uh, well, force me out, obviously, and pretty much hoping I was kinda sacking it, but I'm not. I'm just gonna go to NC. I was kinda fearing that here comes, you know, either the T Wave or the Toxic, you know, Bayonet has those access ability. But uh, no, he's just gonna go for a safe Willow, but at this point it hardly will matter. So yeah, like I said, <laughs> it's a GG. Um, and really all I can say, uh, obviously with that, as far as whatnot, was that, like I said, I prepped very very heavy for a match that I didn't actually get. And that was, not only was that surprising, but I also was very impressed by the way Pat decided to play this game. And while I do win it, and I win it really comfortably, who knows? Had he of course kept track of Sap Zipper, things might have turned differently. So yeah, this was actually the last um, battle for a week when it comes to in the Mount Battle Association. We are now in the playoff and again, ending up with a record of 9-2, which is actually just insane. And the reason I of course say that that is, is insane is because, well, to be completely honest, I've never had such a massive record and having such a great lead overall uh, in any league, you never really end um, Obviously, I have my great team of actually thank for that, but also, I think I've been playing smarter than and smarter, and finally, I, I think that I feel I get the game, uh, you know, by the end of the sixth generation, I finally think I'm doing stuff right, and it took me like three years to get there. But, uh, it has been really interesting, and I do believe we end up first due to that record. I lost two times, of course, one of those being against a fully paralyzation against Ninjas with passive speed boosts and Heracross, so that was unfortunate. And probably that game on the control outside of that. And the second game, of course, beat with a mighty, mighty Mega Aggron with Curse and single attacking Mega Mega Aggron with just Heavy Slam, Sleep Dog Resting Curse. Yeah, very weird set, but my god, was it effective. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm really looking forward to going into playoff. I, I do intend to win at least one league and on myself to one title because my god I fought for it. But yeah, outside of that I hope you guys enjoy the new content or the new quality of the videos. I actually figured out how to solve the black borders and the game looks really 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 crisp. So it's of course finally in HD. So <laughs> yay! <laughs> So, anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, and of course, look forward to the next games, of course, in Mouth Moon Battle Association, which is going to be our first playoff game, and I don't know which one I'm facing just yet. But with all that said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care guys. Bye.